hello guys welcome to another video in the series of coding today we are going to do the problem it's called find rectangle with corners as one so let's uh, try to see the problem so you are given a grid right now in this grid you have to find rectangles with corners as one so for example this is one rectangle right so you can find a rectangle or a square anyway all squares are rectangles so let's not confuse so we have to just find basically rectangles that are uh, present in the matrix for example this is getting connected right so this is a rectangle so in this matrix there is a rectangle so you have to return true so uh, let's discuss a brute force approach to solve this problem and then we'll see how to optimize it so brute force approach is what we'll do so first of all we will iterate with two using two for loops right we will iterate over the entire matrix right so let's look at each cell i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus similarly for j equal to 0 j less than n j plus plus okay so let's say we are iterating over each cell right so these two for loops will do what they will just iterate over each cell one by one right so you will just keep on iterating over each cell now whatever uh, for loops will do now let's say we see a one right this is the brute force approach which we are discussing let's say we see a one what are we supposed to do so we are iterating over each cell using these two for loops now whenever we see a one right so let's say we see a one so let's say if matrix of i j is equal to one now what do you have to do you have to find other such ones right which are there in the same row you have to find a one that is there in the same row right that is there first of all in the same row because if you are find uh, forming a rectangle you need four corners right so you should find a one which is there in the same row first of all but in some other column so you have to check for this one next in the same column you have to check in the same column but some other row right row can be different but some other but but the same column you have to find a one and see let's say this is ij right this cell represents ij let me mark it again see what we did let's say we have a one right we have a one we found this one okay so if if this condition is true what are we doing let's say the coordinates of this is i comma j okay let's say the coordinates is i comma j for this cell okay for this cell so now you have to find in the same i you have to find some other j right some other j2 which is also one okay in the same row in the same row for the same i corresponding to the same i you have to find some other j2 which is not equal to j okay so that means you have to in simple terms you have to find some other cell which is in the same row but in different column so let's say our column is j so we should find some j2 okay you have to find this cell also you have to find another cell which is in the same column which is in the same column okay so the j should be same but row will be something else so let's say i to j okay this is the coordinates of this this cell okay i to is some other column which is different from i but the row is same so j is going to be same between these two uh, cells but the uh, the column is going to be same but the row is different okay and you also have to find some other cell which is having i2 and j2 because this is i2 and this is j2 then only it will complete our it will complete our rectangle so once you find i j equal to 1 right now you still have to check for i j2 i2 j and i2 and j2 okay so we will have to run two more for loops so let's run two more for loops so for let's say i2 equal to 0 i2 less than n i2 plus plus similarly you run one more for loop for j2 so by the way i2 will not start from 0 i2 will start from i plus 1 because once you find a cell here right you can just search in the columns below only this is your search space within this you have to find a rectangle right there's no point in searching in the bigger matrix again because this is your starting cell you are considering i and j as your starting cell so you have to just search in this remaining space so that's why i'm giving i2 equal to i plus 1 and j2 equal to j plus 1 okay and j2 less than n j plus plus j2 plus plus so now we have another two for loops so what you have to search in this for loops same thing just search if matrix of i j2 is equal to 1 okay so basically if this cell is 1 and you also have to find three other cells okay so when once you find i j equal to 1 right once you find the starting cell you have to find three other cells one cell is i and j2 right this is the cell and the other cell is i to j this cell 
so i to j should be equal to 1 and also you should also check for the last ending cell i to j2 is equal to 1 okay so if this is true right if this is true if this is true then you can return you can return true okay so we have written the code here now what is the time complexity of this code this is the brute force approach and what is the time complexity time complexity is c what we are doing i have simply taken n for simplicity but actually it will be m into n right if you have a m into n matrix it will be so what is the time complexity you have four for loops right so m into n into m into n the time complexity is equal to m square into n square for this four for loop solution right so we understood what we are doing whenever we find a starting cell right in the same row you are searching for another one in the same column you are searching for another one and then you are searching for the ending cell and you are completing the rectangle okay so there is a brute force approach right now how to uh you know make the solution a little bit better so so one simple way is instead of searching every time right what if you store the ones so what do i mean by that so what we are going to do we are going to try to improve the time complexity we are going to store the ones okay so let's say we start by iterating in the first cell right so the initial for loops will remain same right so for i to n and similarly for j to n okay the first two for loops are same so what we do when we see a cell okay what we will also do is we will store this store this one store this pairs of ones right why are we storing pairs of ones because let's say if we had already stored these pairs of ones right again if we find a pairs of ones in the same column right suppose see what is this column this is column 2 and this is column 4 okay so if let's say we had already seen a pair 2 4 we had already seen that two ones are found in column 2 and 4 and okay in some other row in some row now again if we see in the column 2 and in column 4 in some other row let's say we find we we find two ones we know that we have completed a rectangle okay so if this is not clear let's 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 do a dry run and then it will be clearer so what we are going to do now while iterating right first of all let's say i i saw that in the first row these two ones are found so what i'm going to do i'm going to store the pair so for clarity let me also write the indices so i am going to store the pairs of one so zero and three are forming a pair right so i'm going to store corresponding to zero i i have a pair in three okay corresponding to zero i have also seen a three i have seen a one at three okay so i'm going to store these two okay. now let's let me iterate over the next row first row i have iterated and i have only one pair i have stored it okay i have stored it in my data structure now let me iterate in the next uh, next row so in the next row i see two ones two and four pair right so i will store them so let me store them what is the pair that i have i have two two and four form a pair okay so i f i find two ones two and four and i store them in my data structure okay now let me go to the third row in the third row i see only one one there is no there is no pair right so by the way what are we doing so we are going to every row right and for every row in every cell right so first we are looking at every cell so these are two for loops right so what we are doing we are going to each cell now in each cell we are also going to check if we see a one at some other place in the row right because we are forming pairs and we are storing the pairs of ones so what i'm doing i am also including one more for loop what i'm doing for j2 equal to j plus one to n right so this is the for loop that i am storing i am checking if i find a pair of one for example i find this pair right this pair of one right so i am going to see this pair and i am going to store this pair okay so i am going to store this pair so what i did the third for loop is j2 equal to j plus 1 to n and i am going to store this pair what is this pair this pair is 0 2 pair right this pair is 0 2 so i am going to store corresponding to 0 right corresponding to 0 i already have um, i already have 3 and i am also going to store 2 okay now let me store the next pair what is the next pair in this row i already saw the 0 2 pair i also have a 0 4 pair okay so i will check if i have if i find a 0 4 pair there is no 0 4 pair already so i am just going to store a new pair so corresponding to 0 i am storing a 4 also okay now let me check the next pair in this row see we we found this pair and we found 0 
zero two and zero four are two pairs that we have looked. Okay, zero two is one pair that we looked. Zero four is one pair that we looked. Now we also have one more pair, two four. Okay, we also have one more pair corresponding to the column, columns two and four. Now what do we observe in our data structure before itself? We have a two four pair from some other row. We have a two four pair. Okay. From some other row, we have a two four pair. That means already we had a two four pair, right? Because in our data structure, we see there is already a two four pair. Okay, so this we can find out in O of one complexity itself if we use an unordered map. So we will use an unordered map to store this. So already we see a two four pair, and now while iterating again, we see a two four pair. That means that our rectangle is complete. Okay, so what is the code for this? What is the code? So what we are doing now while iterating right first of all in each cell we, we are checking we are first of all checking each cell then for each cell in the same row we are checking if we find a pair of one right so what are we checking now instead of checking single ones we are going to check pair right so what we are checking if matrix of ij is equal to 1 first of all okay this is ij and we are also checking a pair so let's say ij2 okay So i j two. If matrix of i j is equal to one and matrix of i j two is equal to one, that means we found a pair. Okay, we found a pair. Now once we find a pair, what we are doing? We are checking if already there is some pair. Okay, already there is some pair from our data structure. So we will store a data structure and we will check if in this data structure there is already a pair. For example, uh, we will check here if we have a zero two pair already. So in our data structure, if if before we had a zero two pair, we would have Store this as our answer. Okay. In this case, we don't have. So now let's code the solution actually, and the time complexity of this will just require three for loops, right? So uh, this will be m. M is the number of uh, rows. So it will be m into n into n, right? This is the time complexity. So we have optimized our time complexity from m square into n square to just m into n square. Okay. Now let's write the code, and then it will be much more clearer. So what we did. So what we are doing? So first of all, for int i equal to zero, let me let me take the number of rows and columns. So let's say m is equal to matrix dot size, which is just the number of rows, and n is equal to matrix of zero dot size, which is the number of columns. Okay. So we have number of rows and number of columns. Now what we are doing? We are going to iterate first of all for each cell. Now when we are iterating over each cell, what we are doing? we are also when we are looking at each cell right when we are looking at each cell okay for example we are at this cell we are also going to look in this in the same row in the same row after this point in the same row have do we have a one so we are going to find this one and one pair right so in the second and fourth column we have a one okay now we'll check if already in our data structure in our map is there a two four stored if there is a two four stored at some other row some other row there is a uh, there is a one one pair stored at two four Again in this row we find a one one pair at two four. That means we found our solution. We found a rectangle. So now I will have to declare a data structure. So map int and see what we are storing in our data structure. It's not a simple map, right? It's not a simple pair pair. For each um, in each corresponding to each column there can be many many ones, right? So for example, corresponding to zero we have two three four because see corresponding to zero corresponding to zero, right? Uh, corresponding to zero at the second position, so let me erase this. Corresponding to the column zero at the third position, we have a one pair. Corresponding to zero, okay, this is this is zero three pair. This is zero two pair, okay, and we also have a zero four pair, and we also have a zero four pair. So corresponding to zero, right, we have three pairs that that we can find. All these three pairs we have to store, right? So this we can. So it's a map. First will be a simple key, but the value is not a simple value. It is a set. It's a set. Okay. So we're going to store a set because we can have lot of different values. Okay. So ba basically, and we have to give unordered because if we give ordered, the time complexity will increase. Unordered only will give time complexity of O of one for searching, right? So we have to give unordered set. Okay. And let me just call it DP. Okay. Because whenever we store values, usually we use DP. So just DP. Okay. Now, what we are going to do for int j two equal to zero, j two less than n, uh, j two plus plus. Okay, so j two is not equal to zero. J two is equal to j plus one because let's say we are looking pairs for this one, right? 
so we are going to look pairs after this point after this point only because there's no point in looking at the pairs before because already the this pairs this side pairs would have been looked at okay before previously itself we would have looked so we have to just look for new pairs so that's why uh, if, if we are looking at this j j2 will start from j plus 1 and go up to up to the end okay so now what we are doing see let me first of all insert okay so let me insert so what we are doing corresponding to each j right so we are going to insert a j2 pair when are we going to do this when we find that it's a one right so if okay so first of all i will check if okay if matrix of ij matrix of ij is equal to one and matrix of i j2 is equal to one so if i find pairs of one then i am going to insert okay but if i already have if i already have in dp if i already have it stored i can simply return true so okay so what i will do i will first of all check if i already have it in the map right so i will just give a if condition here so what i will do i will check if in my uh, map okay which is i just call it dp so if dp dot find j if it's not equal to dp dot n that means that there is a value corresponding to this particular column and dp of j dot find j2 dot find j2 not equal to dp dot n okay that means i have found if this is if this is true right that means so what i am basically doing here i am simply checking i am simply checking for example okay let me take the example this is 2 comma 4 right i am checking if already in my map there is a 2 comma 4 first of all i am checking if there is a 2 right if correspond if at 2 itself dp dot find j not equal to dp dot n will check if in my map i have a key corresponding to 2 if i have a key corresponding to 2 then for 2 right for 2 in my map i will check if in the set right dp of j is just the set so in the set of 2 corresponding to 2 which i have stored if i am finding 4 if i am finding 4 right so the key is 2 and the in the set there will be lot of values in among those values i am checking if i have already found 2 4 so if i already have a 2 4 pair in our example then in that case what i can do is i can just return okay i can just return true because because currently i i found a one one pair again and already in my map i had stored a one one pair i can return true else okay else i can just insert this so else i will insert okay so that's it and after this if i don't find i can return false so let's run and see if it's going to work So there is some problem. Okay, so here I should give dp of j dot n because because we are looking for the set. Okay, so I think that is a problem. Let me just compile it again. So it's fine, and let's just submit and see if it's working. So it's working, thank you for being patient and listening.